It might not seem like it, but the PlayStation 4 has been around for quite a while at this point. It launched in 2013, and it's gone through actually a lot of change over the course of its life, and today, we want to recount that. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on GameRanks, the evolution of the PlayStation 4. The development of the PlayStation 4 began all the way back in 2008. That's a decade ago. And the design philosophy for the PlayStation 4 was not very similar to the one of the PlayStation 3. On the PlayStation 3, they created a state-of-the-art architecture called the Cell. It was famously difficult to develop for and often ended up with superior versions on a technically inferior system in the Xbox 360. The price point for the PlayStation 3 when it launched, which was $499 for one with a 20 gigabyte hard drive, which was not enough even then, and $599 for a 60 gigabyte hard drive version, so $600 for a PS3 with a decent amount of space that I filled up anyway. People did not like that. Understandably so. If you consider inflation, the $600 PlayStation 3 would cost $750 today. And again, a lot of games were inferior on the platform. They knew they had to change something. That $500 to $600 price point was a result of creating it from the hardware. Attempting to create a very advanced architecture that everybody would have to learn and program, but would ultimately yield more power if somebody could learn and program for that architecture brought them to that that price point. Instead, for the PlayStation 4, they subscribed to a different idea that they dubbed creative destruction, meaning all of their concepts from the past they wiped away and started clean. They said, this system is going to cost $399, and we're going to make the components fit that. And this didn't necessarily mean skimping, it meant using less proprietary stuff. They ended up going with an AMD APU, or Accelerated Processing Unit, which is a microprocessor that has a CPU and a GPU on one single cast. The base PS4, of course, has 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory and a nice big ol' storage drive of 500 gigabytes. That's a half a terabyte. Ultimately, this was the right choice, as it made game development for the PlayStation 4 a lot more similar to PC game development. Not necessarily in power, but for developers who were small and were thinking about porting to another platform, it was quite appealing, and for larger AAA developers, it gave the prospect of selling in volume without really doing a lot. Sure, you'd have to change some things, but ultimately working with the PS4 was just way easier than working with the PS3. And it might sound less enticing to say we created a system that is a really good aggregate of some more generic components, but it was probably the right business move because we all know how the PlayStation 4 has turned out. Even with some of the complaints people have, it's way ahead of everything else. What was particularly cool is they had a pretty big launch lineup. Now, they didn't necessarily have a killer app, but they did have a few AAA games like Battlefield 4, Assassin's Creed 4, and honestly a pretty good exclusive from Guerrilla Games in Killzone Shadows Fall. This was also filled up by a number of more indie-oriented games, but it was an overall pretty strong launch. It took them two weeks to sell over 2.1 million units, and by the end of the month they had sold 4.2 million which is a very successful launch. In February of the next year, 2014, they sent out a press release that said they had sold 5.3 million units worldwide. It was in fact such a successful launch that Sony CEO at the time, Kaz Hire, said, it is likely the PS4 will become the platform which exceeds the profits earned with the PlayStation 2. Now it's important to note, that doesn't mean we'll sell more units than the PlayStation 2, it means we'll generate more money than the PlayStation 2. But still, that's confidence. I mean, to be fair, that confidence was justified. Sony overtook Nintendo in console sales that year for the first time in eight years because Nintendo launched the Wii U, confusing the hell out of everyone, basically grinding the Wii brand to a screeching halt, and Sony launched the PlayStation 4 very successfully. They went on that year to sell 13.5 million PS4 consoles, which was 3.5 million more than Xbox One. It also happened to be the 20th anniversary of the PlayStation, and they created a collector's edition of the PS4, which they only sold in the $600 model. That sold pretty well. It was cool for people looking for a little nostalgia, but ultimately it helped that it was basically the dominant game console at the time, and they released a special edition of it during the first year when its marketing was at its peak. In 2015, 
2018, they announced Project Morpheus, their VR headset, which didn't look atrociously uncomfortable like a lot of VR stuff constantly looked and felt. In 2015, they also rolled out the new 8% power saving, 10% less heavy, but still pretty much more or less the same model of the PlayStation 4. Now, they created a terabyte special edition for it called the Ultimate Player Edition, but it really wasn't a big difference. But this enabled them to lower the price of their main model, the regular PlayStation package of the console, down to $349. And on the strength of this change, and on the strength of some pretty big exclusives like Bloodborne, as well as Until Dawn and the Drake's collection of the first three Uncharted games, which is very nice to have, it became the fastest selling PlayStation Sony had ever made. By November 2015, they'd sold over 30 million units. A rumor came out claiming Sony was preparing a pro version of the PlayStation 4, which would be an expanded, more powerful version that, by all accounts, would be good for 4K or just having better quality graphics. A few months later, in September, they released the PlayStation 4 Slim and lowered the price of the PlayStation 4 to $299. That's a phenomenal price point for a system that I'm still using today. The Slim is awesome. It's 30% smaller and uses between 16 and 25% less energy, depending on which model you're comparing it to, and that's a big reduction. When you consider how much some people play PlayStation 4, including myself, it's nice not to have it eating up that much energy. Not only did they announce the Slim, but they announced the Pro. Both of these consoles were released, and both of them were very nice. The next month, they released the PlayStation VR, which is cool. Although, it's 2018, which is two years later, and it's still basically cool. It's not revolutionary. And it certainly hasn't changed everything, but, I mean, it's neat. In December, Sony confirmed they had passed 50 million units, and that's a pretty good year, especially since they released Uncharted 4, The Last Guardian, and Ratchet and & Clank. Uncharted 4 was jaw-dropping. The Last Guardian was beautiful and wonderful, but even more shocking that it just got released. And the Ratchet & Clank remake was just wonderful. And I think Uncharted alone probably would have been big for the PlayStation 4, but as far as their exclusives go, they definitely did great that year. In February 2017, they announced that they would finally allow you to plug in an external hard drive and use it. Which, good! That's something that should have been there in the first place, but better late than never. Also in February, they added Boost Mode, which helped some games run, well, let's just say smoother. Now, Sony really didn't make a lot of missteps up until this point. I mean, this is last year, and PlayStation 4 has more or less been a runaway success. But in June of 2017, Sony decided decided they were going to block crossplay with the Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. And they gave a really bad reason, too. They supposedly wanted to have more control over the experience because we have a responsibility to our install base. And, like, I do understand some issues involving that. For instance, cheaters. Thankfully, that was resolved later, and we will talk about it later. Blocking crossplay was not enough to stop Sony profits from rising 346% specifically because of strong performance from their PlayStation division. Over time, they'd reduced the cost to manufacture the PlayStation and even the PlayStation Plus, so the fact that the market was still okay with its price points meant they were making a lot more money. That and things like PlayStation Plus memberships and all of the various accoutrements that come along with that led them to end 2017 with a 70 million cumulative unit sales for the PlayStation 4. And to be frank, 2017 was probably my favorite year for exclusives. I mean, we had Horizon Zero Dawn, which is just, oh, it's so good. Persona 5, which is, in my opinion, probably the best in that series. It's amazing. The Crash Bandicoot and Saiyan Trilogy. I mean, just those games alone are wonderful. To have Crash Bandicoot back and looking that good makes me really happy, to be honest. And to have a new IP in Horizon Zero Dawn that's just friggin' phenomenal. <sighs> 2017 was so good. In March of 2018, it was announced that the final phase of PlayStation 4's life cycle is beginning. Now, that doesn't mean that they're ending it anytime soon. They just do things in phases, and that's how business tends to work. Over the course of five years, at the time of announcement, they had sold 76 million PS4s, bringing the total PlayStations sold to 500 million. I mean, that's all PlayStations, of course, not just the PlayStation 4 
4, but to celebrate with the PlayStation 4, they created a 500 million edition of the PS4 Pro, which is translucent and blue and actually really cool looking. However, a nice looking home appliance that plays games and doesn't play them with other gamers is still a bit of an issue. So when September opened up with no end of the crossplay war in sight, people weren't exactly happy. And apparently, Sony finally realized that after so many people telling them they sound like jerks in so many words, they should maybe stop sounding so much like jerks and let people play across platforms. Probably the most anticipated game award show, if that's your type of thing, is the Game Ranks Awards. No, I mean, you do care about that, I would hope, but I'm talking about the Game Awards, of course. The nominees this year pretty much inundated with exclusives on the PlayStation 4, from God of War, which is phenomenal, to Detroit Become Human, which is pretty interesting and detailed storytelling to the big man on campus, meaning the spider man on campus. And honestly, it's just fairly impressive to see. Sony has made a good show and pretty much every year with exclusives, but this has been a heavy hitting year. And although, like I said, maybe 2017 was kind of my favorite year for PlayStation exclusives, it's really hard to deny the weight behind this year. God of War is one of the single best games of all time, in my opinion at least. And Spider-Man is made by Insomnia Games, like the frickin' masters of design. Although there's some stuff in it that is maybe a little bit standard for the type of game it is, doesn't stop it from being amazing. And really, through the years, the PlayStation 4, though it had a strong launch, I think has more come into its own than I think anybody expected it to. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of how gaming felt back in the 1990s, where you actually did to some degree think, well, Wow, they actually want there to be good games. And that's not to say that Microsoft hasn't done the same, really. In a lot of cases, they have excelled, but I just wouldn't say as much. And Crackdown 3. But the point isn't to bring anybody else down, but rather talk about the development of a platform from maybe it'll be good to this has been a really good console. And it's awesome. It's awesome to have that happen. What do you think? What was your favorite PlayStation 4 game? What about PlayStation 4 has developed the best in your mind? And just general thoughts. What do you think? Leave us a comment and tell us. If you like this video, please click like. And if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. So click the subscribe button and do not forget to click the notification bell because that way you won't miss any new videos. As always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time, right here on Game Ranks.